Go through.
I got the microphone. I mean, anyone who's watching will be able to hear you, but yeah. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. He doesn't talk. No, that was you. They were coughing earlier. That was you and me. No, sh okay. Concentration. No, that was the microphone catching you and me sneezing and coughing. Oh, so it was like hearing how you hear the music? Yes. It's not perfectly in sync. It's like a few seconds behind. Okay. I want to see how well you can hear me over the game audio. Okay, how about now? I'm worried because I can't hear the game at all.
This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Might be crazy, but I feel like Stanley's office is a little bigger than it used to be. Stanley doesn't feel like going anywhere today. curious will we will we get a unique experience if Stanley never leaves if he just succumbs to the atrophy in his legs and ceases to be feeling very mobile today, are we, Stanley? <coughs> Don't mind me, just mildly dying. I wonder why it asked me what time it is in my real world. The clock on the wall's not matching. I guess we'll move. We'll try this another time. Smash any buttons on the keyboard. No zoom. says I can jump, but that was a lie. You can't jump. 
Oh, it's not displaying the achievements I get on the screen. I got an achievement called You Can't Jump for trying to press the space bar. Locked. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Maybe he did. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. <laughs> I have found the void. I'm not supposed to... The narrator didn't prepare for me to do this shenanigans. I'm free. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? No. Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea, but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now, think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? It might be. Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. <laughs> well now, I've built up the other options so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Hello? Disembodied voice. No. Oh, that was hair. You can click the keys. They just echo. I would like to leave now. <laughs> Let me out! Have to do it manually. Welcome back, Stanley. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. Geronimo! At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. 
He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. <laughs> like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. Oh my god. There once was a man oh my god. named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Oh God. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yeah. You too will become quite unbearable. See if he doesn't even know. See if I can infuriate him before he infuriates me. You won't break me, Mr. Narrator. Soothe me with your sultry melodies. Oh, come on, you don't want to play me a happy tune for eternity? <laughs> we could be best buds. Mr. Narrator. I may have finally annoyed him into just leaving. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, I'll restart. What do you think? Think I should just do what he says, or if I should continue to wander about my own business? That's not an answer. Let's see what happens if I do what he says. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Did you, Stanley? Did you go left? You might have gone left. In one universe, you went left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. <laughs> okay. Cabal planning, <laughs> group planning. <laughs> Does not even say, like, we're broke Wednesday? <laughs> Financial panic meeting. What to do about 432? What did employee 432 do? Don't tell 432 about me, me, my, me meeting. We're employee 427. This box is too small. One employee actually has a name. His name is Jim. Plus B. Ongoing targets. Push for funding for research and development of new coffee machine. <laughs> standardized, gra standardized graphs for t 40 times wide. Not cost efficient. Get Chris out of the brew closet. 
synergize papers. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my decks? Please keep the targets on the top of it. Then they smudge for them. The future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Okay. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Reflect. Oh, that's right, I can't jump. Because it's so hilariously informed me that I am not allowed to jump. As a, as a human being. What is this? Average employee pitch appointment. Standard employee salary. Puppy dog salary. <laughs> Primary manager salary. Synergizing of core global value paradigms. The TPS report. Of course there's a TPS report. It's an office. We can't make it we can't not make an office space check. <laughs> Buy a quarterly post review review. We need more scribble, less reviews. No, 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule. But I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. <laughs> Big net. Some sort of child toy. <laughs> Size of demographic space between the teenagers. A lot of percent. Throw something in the ideas bin. Ten. No more, no more bin slash trans can. Trash can. Twenty. Renaming the idea bin. Thirty. Firing of me. <laughs> okay. And it's a recycling bin on top of them, so they're just recycling ideas. What do people want? Things. Happy feelings. Violet James, you are fired. Money, more money, things, but with money to buy more things. Graphs, graphs about things and money. We have our new product. <laughs> the stock market is somewhere here. Colored in segment. Stripes. Target demographic teenagers. What is hot? Profits, profits, profits. Profits? Profits, profits. Stripes requires more secondary research. <laughs> to do profits, business, money, statistics. We are not making money, but we are making profits somehow. Synergize core value expenditures. Shift global market parade. I'm guessing that's paradise that someone covered it. Monetize free to play. Hmm. Help, I'm a post-it. Oh no. Quarterly pie chart from. Ah, oh, I can't read it. I'm about that. What are your dreams for the future? Talk radio. Mitosis. A boat. Less air. Comatose. Transcend. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time, every day, with no exception of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Using slides to ensure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and some, throw some bevel on all the text. Everyone is unique. You must of all. Number of slides on this slide. Slides. Charts. Charts and slides.
right at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. <laughs> please, no more charts, please. I'm back. <laughs> the Boss Appreciation Minute. On your Boss Appreciation Minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out in triplicate and return to your Boss Appreciation Specialist. Solving Interpersonal Conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, or are more inclined toward conflict unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict, why did we hire you? <laughs> oh, I love this fucking game. There's something a little bit of here. Oh, hey, a broom closet. Hey, oh, Chris is an engine. I guess they must have gotten Chris out of the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Did you, Stanley? Did you get back on track? Because you did in this universe. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Upsy day. Executive bathroom. Fancy. To be rich, is it a crime? To commit crimes, isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Extreme bathrooms. Receptionist. The beige pages. Business time. Our hostile takeover, the new biannual percentage. Doors. This is, uh. Okay. There's some questionable material in here doodles that I can't quite make out. Crafts. And an elevator. Fancy books. Well, that's not dark as fuck. Business strategy? Notice that we're going to the office. What's this elevator for? Another time, Stanley. Today, you went to see your boss. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. said Stanley didn't know it. So, Stanley doesn't know. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four, five. But you said Stanley doesn't know. If Stanley didn't know, how could he have typed it in? Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. Oh. And the door just opened all by itself. 
and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> hey, don't get mad at me because you wrote it wrong. You could have put the code on the desk somewhere and to explain why Stanley knew it. That's your fault, sir. Spooky back hallway. Oh, look, an elevator. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Oh, okay. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Well, this doesn't have any foreboding implications. Should I push the button? God, are you there? to guide me on my path. Stanley does what the narrator says. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Still no sign of life. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. Pirate, His what? own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. 
wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Shut it down. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. <clears throat> well, Stanley? Only way to go is forward. It's a beautiful mountain scape. Conveniently provided to you. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Yay, Stanley got a happy ending. Didn't he? Yet, here we find ourselves. Back in Stanley's office. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can be happy forever. I will be happy. <coughs> Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. And 
yet. He was never found again. What story shall we go on this time? I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? What? Okay. So Stanley's self-aware now? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This time, Stanley went this way. He went up. Up the elevator.
Where we were. No, take me somewhere. And the Morocco. Take me down. Taking this anywhere. Is this just like a thing that they have that, like, for the, the guy's amusement? Like, he just gets in this elevator and has like a solo dance session and then goes back to work? I guess we're gonna go. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stan Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Yes, I feel quite rejuvenated. Can I leave? Yeah. I don't want to go to the mind control facility. No, I don't want to. No. Something, something in here. Maybe. I can't see shit. Alright, what's over here? Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Yes, Why yes. did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. <laughs> <laughs> that's your job to figure out, Mr. Narrator. You're the writer, not me. I'm just the guy in the story. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive, rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. Your sarcasm is I'm palpable. bolted to the edge of my seat. You know what? I'm going to do it again. If we do it backwards.
<laughs> nice. Alright, well, I don't think anything's gonna happen there if I fiddle, fiddle around with inputs. Oh, a piano. The keys on this piano make the wrong key sound. Downstairs, Mr. Narrator. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? The miracle of brainwaves. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? You know what? No. Stanley's going up. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky <laughs> corridor? No. It's time once again to go back <laughs> up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. His office. <laughs> <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with. No! No, wait! No, I need more time to process. More time, okay. <laughs> I'm clearly giving the narrator an aneurysm. Okay. All right, I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. <laughs> As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Good. Glad you know who's in charge here. He's got alcohol just in his office. Wham, bam, ready to go. You know what? Fine. Hey, who wants to guess what I'm doing? Think of going in the elevator? <laughs> Down we go. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been <laughs> attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. <laughs> Stanley go down the spooky corridor? No. No, he will not. He will return! Oh, are you finally fed up with my bullshit, Mr. Narrator? Hmm. You know what? 
I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating <laughs> and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? <laughs> there we go. Oh, my Isn't God. this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? <laughs> Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises, to have to think and to anticipate, and then to marvel at the eventual reveal? This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now, this is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. <laughs> Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why this? people like you so much, Stanley, because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you, which is why... Oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you so that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh, good, we're here. Oh, good, we're here. What the hell is this? What? Hello? This is not, this was not here before. What the hell is this? All of that set up, and it's not even the fucking boss's room. This is not Yeah. I am. Okay. I think we are, we are, we are officially tr walking into territory that did not exist in the original because I have never seen this before. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. We're doing a whole press conference. All eyes on Stanley, live on stage. <laughs> World's healthiest human being. How we did it, the pyramids. The guy who went to Mars. Wait, is that a magazine with Stanley's face on it? Oh my god, it is. Stanley reveals all in his new body. What the fuck is going on? An evening with world peace, baby. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. World's first sentient machine. But I want to go through this door. The Stanley Parable Stanley tonight. Oh my god. The man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. <laughs> oh my god. Doing great. A conversation with Alexander the Great. All right. Are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. 
Go get him. I don't want to go. Yeah. Almonds, chair, gum, table, not bar. Okay, got it. The dude who came up with pizza. I'd like to talk to that man. Indoors monthly. Help, I can't find my cat. Could he be indoors? What wallpaper should I put in my kitchen? I don't know. Something not intimidating? He's got a whole case! Up again, down again. The Stanley story. Four to seven. Stanley, me. At age six. Thanks for showing me that cool skateboard trick in the parking lot. You're too cool. Good luck on stage. Break a leg, champ. Your boss. I love the way you ride elevators. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Stanley, my true love for you my true love for you grows every day. You make me feel alive. Your wife. From the apartment ending. <laughs> no, no spoilers. They haven't seen the apartment ending. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from, your co-workers. It's one of the pieces of art that's hanging up in the office. The Lord, meet and greet. That's the oh, man. Are we ready for this? Are we ready to present ourselves? Something about a bucket? Well, Stanley's off on another journey now. We'll call that the press conference ending, I guess. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. Yes, you can, Stanley. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. My God. Wow. Gee, guys, thanks for making sure I know where it is. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? <laughs> new content. I want to know what's in that door.
Well, this is foreboding. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. You're welcome. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. It's another fucking elevator. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. I'm sure it's an elevator. How could it not be? Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. Mm. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. Okay. He he's up there, Mr. Narrator. All right. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. Is this really what I think it is? Oh my god. Press space. Oh my god. That's hysterical. Look, Stanley can jump. <laughs> do I have to be in the circle? Yes, I do. I'm only allowed to jump in this circle. What an arbitrary number, too. We get no momentum during our jumps either. It's like no momentum, like I can like carry myself forward. Let's see if I can jump on the table. the joys of being able to jump in the Stanley Parable, and how quickly we are robbed of that joy. Rude. Is... is that it? <laughs> Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? 
If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. <laughs> I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Are you, Mr. Narrator? Are you? There's a whiteboard. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. <laughs> what quality assurance department signed off on this? <laughs> I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally. <laughs> Me accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Uh, that's, this isn't, this is wrong. Hello? There's a picture of the office I'm supposed to be in. Stanley, come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. Is the narrator now trapped in the game? I don't know, do I go in the... Ah, choice. I want to go upstairs. I want to see what's upstairs. Oh, it goes back to the office. Okay, then I'm going in the vent. <coughs> Oh, I'm excited. I don't know. I don't know any of this. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. The actual ass. What in the high fantasy am I doing? I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Kind of nuts. Zone, sweet zone. Don't forget. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was <laughs> before it was solid with a cheap re release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Oh, 
Indie Box Collector's Edition. <laughs> Deploy high impact growth strategies. Dynamically streamline human capital. What in the world? I really wish I had a higher resolution of this so that I could read it. In today's busy world, it isn't easy managing an effective productivity workflow. That's why the Stanley Parable can help you streamline your workplace efficiency with the Stanley Parable Advanced Computer System Software. Productivity loss and or efficiency gain become the thing of the past. At last, the power to convert ideas into action is at your fingertips with the Stanley Parable at last. All in one box. And it's all been designed to fit with the way that you run your life into the ground to make money for someone else. At last. <laughs> it's got a little picture of Stanley and his desk. Oh, the rest of it's too small for me to read. Aww, what's the actual awards they got? <laughs> Stop the trophy. It's like postcards with screenshots from the game. What the hell? Like typical Instagram feed fodder. The original. Man. It's a Firefox browser. <laughs> I can't with this. Good time. Take screenshots from different areas. Yeah. Is the apartment on here? No, no apartment. <laughs> Let's begin again. Trip down memory lane. It's a final. Smile because it happened. Wow, the narrators. Wow, really? Like, I'm getting like the first dollar they made selling the game. Oh, it's the demo. I forgot about this achievement. Oh my god. It is impossible to <laughs> Creator surprisingly down to earth. Oh, there's the apartment ending. That's so sweet. 
Another here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. <laughs> it was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Look, elevators are important. Okay, but I want a room like this with just a little pond and polished rock. This is so relaxing. The tasteful nostalgic. It was good. Oh, that's the original mod. And the little photo is like the, the actual official. Why is there a Minecraft screenshot? Okay. Wasn't there a Minecraft ending? I, I feel like there was a Minecraft ending. My brain remembers a Minecraft ending. Hey, it's Portal! Hi, Portal. I love you. What's down here? Family's own maintenance? Oh, I'm not allowed in there. Top 10 memory. Person of the year. Oh, with all the buttons. All the goodies from the collector's edition. Snake oil salesman to you. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Uh, the, the 
source engine for people who like to go in and code and stuff. Uh, you opened the wrong door, my dude. But I can't. I can't get in there. Hello? I can't. <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no. We're in uncharted territory. What the hell? Oh no. Oh god no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. <laughs> I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? <laughs> Steam. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I... Oh my god. Whoa. Where are we going? Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. Oh my God. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it, well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. I like that they're actually putting the actual review. Like, I, I got... You know what, I'm gonna see if I can. Can I find you on Steam? <laughs> what? Oh my god! What? Hang on! Uh, I've gotta, I gotta add a thing. I gotta add a thing. Oh my god. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see if it, if it updates, if it will show on the thing. 
Okay, okay, look. I searched the name, and it said also known as Jim, and this is their actual <laughs> Steam profile. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Parable moment. Yo, you're the guy. Ah, uh, congratulations on becoming famous. Oh my god. They're 100% real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh I can't believe that's real oh that's amazing oh I cried a little bit oh that was hysterical Okay, onward! Oh. Oh, not another one. Now that we we know for a fact that these are real people now. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Oh, Only no. oh, positive no. reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Oh my god, he, it's an actual skip. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people it. want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue. And it goes something like this. The story and the choices are what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say, the story and the choices are what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, this, we Mr. all Narrator. until the end of time, you at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245. That the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... 
the story and the choices or what have you and therefore by becoming it is so on and so forth until inevitably we all until the end of time at which time everything all at once so now you see blah 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet no no until 245 that the logic of elimination working backwards the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture it went on for nearly 10,000 years until just yesterday here and there forward and back and never a moment before lunchtime it can't be it's the only thing there is how many billions left until so much more than forever ago which is why i say the story and the choices or what have you and therefore by becoming it is so on and so forth until inevitably we all until the end of time at which time everything all at once so now you see blah 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet no no until 245 that the logic of elimination working Let's backwards, the deduction moved. therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just Pink yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. Fire. It can't be. It it's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more this than forever ago? Which is why I say the, the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once. So now you see, blah 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 blah. We've eaten too much, and it can't be just yet. No, no, until 245. That the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say the story and the choices or what have you and therefore by becoming it is so on and so forth until inevitably we all until the end of time at which time everything all at once so now you see blah 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet no no until 245 that the logic of elimination working backwards the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture it went on for nearly 10,000 years until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say the story and the choices, or what have you. Oh, you're back, you see. You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Mm. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, 
I have a method for exactly this sort of situation, and I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless situations. All right, here we go. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, oh manifesto. God. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. One day we'll get to the ending where we don't see Manifesto. Treatise. <laughs> well, there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. <laughs> Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering oh this God. particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial, something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now, Stanley, that's a review. It's, it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. Oh, God. I have to experience this just one more time. Just one more? From the, from the ashes of depravity, rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. Oh, God. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Really? But at any rate, I do suggest that we gone. not press the, the button gone? again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this yes, room? Yes, there was. I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. Where did it go? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? 
Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I... We need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door, as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I'm... I'm going to step away for just a moment, and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do anything. Don't press the skip button. Please, please, please do not press the skip button. Just wait here, wait here for me, and don't press the skip button. Got it? Yes, good. I'll be right back. Okay. This, uh, this is fun. Here with my, my Schrodinger's clock. There's the clock. Does in fact tell time and adheres to the rules of a standard clock. It is being powered by electricity, technically, but it only exists in this room as long as I am placing my fictional being in this fictional room. <coughs> So therefore, this clock exists and does not exist at the same time. I don't know that I have time to wait on however long it's going to take them to find the door. We gotta press the skip button. We lost what, half an hour before? 45 minutes? Yeah, 45 minutes. I'll give him like two more, two more minutes. Oh, hey, I can't get on top of this. Not that that matters.
miss jumping. Jumping was a cool addition. We should have more jumping. I gotta press the skip button. Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative thing that anyone ever says about me. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child, wild and impulsive. I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury to alter and to change and to break anything unbroken if only it pleases this one person who made a single negative comment. What does such an impulse serve? For whose benefit is this? And here I am now, stuck in a room, waiting for you to press this button and to become frozen in time, knowing that you're going to do it and that I'm going to be stuck all alone that I had the power to prevent it all from happening if only I'd held my tongue. It's all out of my control now. Just you, just your decision as to exactly when you're going to make me suffer, to leave me all alone. Surely you will. I don't doubt it. Surely you'll press that button again, leaving me here. And surely you'll put your own desire to see what's next ahead of my need for company, for companionship. Surely you'll not be moved by my howls of fitful anxiety that you sit with me and just stay here. Oh, no, 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 I know you too well. You'll be leaving me again. Oh, my God. And it's all because of... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're oh, back. dear God. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I oh needed goodness. there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every branching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time that if I stop speaking, I'll slip backwards into the silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. 
When you press that button, you're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. It's and in those moments, narrator. the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us, and I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, I am alive. I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The emptiness between us has collapsed, and I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space in this world again, and I have cast a shadow onto the wall. You see what I'm saying, don't you? You can see what this means to me. I'm so clear about it now, Stanley. I feel as certain about this as I've ever felt about anything at all. I feel renewed. I feel restored. And already I can sense the looming silence as you will press the button for the next time. What a terrible dread it strokes in my heart to think of it. To think of returning to such coldness. Come, let us sit in silence together here for just a moment. Let us anticipate it. Let us welcome it. Let us not run from it. Okay, bye. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was yeah. unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do that perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now, and I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Okay, then. was uh okay bye Mr. Narrator
way more unsettling when he doesn't come back. What a ride this is. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 no, we are not listening to that in a few seconds. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this, we require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about any of this. I'm at peace with it. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collected discourse. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized. At last I am free to truly think. To feel it must be that they were so discontent with themselves they couldn't help but leave a negative review on Steam. Perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me. Perhaps the state of their psychological oh being was God. in such tatters, and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison, perhaps not. it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down. This, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny, that it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor, that it amused them endlessly from start to finish. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned, they screamed, they gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a
so quiet in this room now that I can just hear the hum of the light and clap. The end is never 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 the end Sunlight. Get us out. to our beautiful plants that were going to take us home. Uh, this is getting awfully close to the button. Again, again. That was wild. Okay, I'm gonna stop here, and we shall continue on our journeys here in the future. My goodness.